Ferguson descending into chaos with looting, vandalism, and violence in the streets. Now, as police crack down on protesters, residents remember a very different city than the turbulent scene being broadcast around the world. How did things spiral so out of control? ABC's Alex Perez is on the ground in Ferguson tonight. Alex. Hey, Juju, it has been a crazy night here in Ferguson. At one point, my crew and I were in the middle of a group of protesters when we heard three gunshots come from the crowd. We had to drop to the ground to get to safety. Many of these protesters are angry and they don't plan on going home anytime soon. Today's grand jury announcement in the shooting of Mike Brown has created widespread civil unrest across the St. Louis area. Angry protesters confronting police in the streets. Police cars destroyed and set on fire. Tear gas and smoke canisters used by law enforcement to disperse the crowds. It's without a doubt been the most intense three and a half months this small Midwestern town has ever seen. Last week, Governor Jay Nixon declared a 30-day state of emergency in anticipation of the very unrest we are seeing in the streets tonight. For residents, it's been a traumatic lead-up that's created deep divides. It could have been me down or dead. It could have been me shot laying in the street and you know it's my killer walk free and michael brown's friend dorian johnson was with him in the minutes before the shooting tonight he says no indictment no justice it's hurt it's hurtful to think that someone can be murdered and you know that killer walk away free the days leading up to today the town has been on a virtual lockdown stores appear closed because businesses have boarded up their windows in fear we look abandoned here Pretty much in prison. Sports fields and playgrounds look like ghost towns, all devoid of life because the Florissant School District officially closed for the rest of the week. In the predominantly white suburbs of St. Louis, we spent time with a couple who has lived in the area for decades and is hunkered down at home tonight. It's always been a wonderful place to raise your children and raise a family. But the last few weeks, they felt their city has been under siege, taken over by rowdy protesters. Our whole city right now is fearful. Everybody feels like they're a random target right now, and that's, that's very uncomfortable. Police officers are thought of as bad, and all white people are thought of as bad, and that's not the case. They've asked us to call them Peter and Sarah for fear their speaking out will create backlash. I certainly respect anybody's right to protest. Um, I've even protested before, but every rule of protesting have been violated. They are terrorizing this town. Sarah says she's sympathetic for Officer Darren Wilson. He can't speak now. There's bounties on his head, and there are Facebook pages set up with bounties that have been collected to kill the man. This isn't the way to solve problems. A Support Darren Wilson Facebook group declined to speak with us, but has over 83,000 likes. For us as citizens of this town to see our police officers being throwing urine on them, throwing rocks at them, throwing bricks at them, have their police cars kicked, been spit on. Nobody in any job would want to put up with that. Despite the unrest, Sarah and Peter hold that race isn't an issue in St. Louis. Our town is not racist. My, I don't know anyone racist myself personally. I think the day and age of racism has gone and passed us. But on the other side of town, Reverend Mike Kinman of Christ Church Cathedral says that some residents need to re-examine their white privilege. To even be able to say there isn't a race problem here shows how deeply disconnected that we are. He and other clergy have designated their churches safe places tonight where residents can come for counseling and peaceful discussion. Until we weep for him as our son, we're not going to get this right. No justice! No peace! 29-year-old DeRay McKesson no of Minneapolis is one of the out-of-town protesters who has become a central organizer in Ferguson since August. We met up with him this weekend. People are upset about black lives being destroyed in America, and people of all races and kinds are coming out to be a part of this movement. To combat the unrest seen in August, DeRay has been training would-be protesters on peaceful demonstration tactics for weeks preparing for this evening. In community centers, protesters have been learning how to go limp if detained by police to mitigate violence and injury.
There's no stress, no fear, no weight right now because we know we're on the right side of justice. A public school's HR director, McKesson, has created a newsletter of protest news, tweets, and meetups that keeps 8,000 subscribers updated with the latest information. If it were not for Twitter, Missouri would have convinced people that we didn't exist. This evening, he released an open letter on behalf of the protesters. For 108 days, we have continuously been admonished that we should let the system work and wait to see what the results are. The results are in, and we still don't have justice. This is it, y'all. Hold, Hold it down. Back at the police station, where Haiku heard the no indictment news earlier this evening, he vowed to stay all night with other protesters to voice their dismay. It means it's legal to kill unarmed kids. I don't care if it was 18. That was a kid fresh out of high school. And they and that message to the world right now is that it's it's okay to kill us. There's no telling when the unrest will end and when the healing will begin. And you can pretty much hear police sirens every couple of seconds here in Ferguson tonight. There are hundreds of police officers on the ground and hundreds of protesters. They're preparing for a long night ahead here. Juju? Thanks, Alex.